Hey everybody, so um, like I mentioned in the last video, uh, we're going to be looking over this uh, DDR Supernova 2 that we just got out of Japan. Uh, I just wanted to kind of point out some differences compared to like a cab that you would say get in um, in the US. So like first thing I've got um, our lovely assistant Benji here is going to be pulling up some of the pads. So we're going to look underneath and um, just kind of show some of the maintenance that they, they take on this. But um i do want to point out you know i've been telling a lot of people that cabs in japan are in just generally better overall shape but you will like look at this and you'll notice it, it's still very worn you have to keep in mind this is a first gen ddr it's been around for you know 20 years um so of course there's going to be some normal wear from that but mainly what i want to point out is um kind of like the maintenance so let's take a look inside and we're going to have, you know, first thing, obviously you expect it to be a little bit dirty, but uh, one thing is that they always have all the, um, all the sensors, all the brackets. It looks like the screws may have fallen out in transit, but, um, out, yeah, yeah. but, you but like, you know, that stuff happens and um, it's relatively normal. Um, and I mean, it doesn't look so much different than what you might find here, but like the key thing is that usually everything is complete. So we can actually open up a couple more and we'll look at those while we're at it. Um, one of the other things is you have stuff like here, you have the card readers built in. Like you can always make something on your own to, to do this if you wanted to, but like you're not gonna find cabs in the US that are, you know, have card readers ready to go. And stuff like the, um, like Supernova 2, never got EMU support in the US at all. Like the US version is just, it's even just like ripped off of it. So having this stuff on there is nice. Um, we'll see how the monitor looks on this. Uh, this is the cab that um, we believe the video cable is having some problems. So it's only, I think it's like displaying a, like a really blue picture. But um, we'll come to that, and I'm going to have that swapped out before this goes out. So I didn't really notice this when we looked over before, but it looks like they've also put on some brackets down here to help keep the cab together. Um, so you know, that's also it's a little bit um, rougher, I think, than normal. We might do a video on one of our future cabs. And we have, I have two, two or three more um, older CRT cabs coming in that are... Um, that are like that. Did we have the, um, was there a bottom key for this or is it just the same, do we know? The oh, they're the same? Okay, so we have the same here. I wanted to check the coin counter on this and it looks like we've got 140,926. Just a coin bucket in there, nothing. There's a power cable. Let's come around back, you have a screwdriver? Uh, we'll open up the back and uh, Take a look at. Uh, it's gonna be number two. Just give me the screwdriver. And we'll take a look at another one of the benefits of having one of these cabs. Is um, well, for one, we've got this this back on it, which they had to install for um, for these kits to fit. But. You have everything that's like an official upgrade. It's not like jank in there. The you don't have like the giant ass board they had to make for the for the U.S. distributors for the EXTIO. It's a you know, it's just a proper harness in there and whatnot. But um, here we've got our umbilical. And it's an original umbilical, of course. You know this part always breaks, so it's uh it's taped down, but. And we'll kind of take a look inside, see what other goodies we have up here. Let's see, we've got, well, probably can't really see right now, but um, I think this was from the old monitor, maybe? That's, that's cut, so, I don't know. Anyway, let's see what other stuff we've got here. Here's the card reader um, cables, the manual. Let's see if we've got anything else. Another little goodies. There is a PS2 controller. So 
That's probably actually hooked up to the PS2. They might have needed it to um, do some stuff when they were working on it. This is uh, Python 2. Um, doesn't look like really anything else in there. Um, honestly, all in all, this cab probably isn't as good a representation of what I wanted to show than um, I expected. This is actually in pretty worn shape. Uh, the other thing, these guys, they mentioned that um, underneath here the header is relatively cracked. So I'm sure we'll see it when we turn it on. They just put the, um, the original um, marquee over the top. But um, I'll probably follow up this video another time. And again, we'll probably try and open one of the, um, one of the more up-to-date SD cabs that we got. So, okay, now we've got the rest of these open. And um, again, I just wanted to point out that, you know, even if it's dirty, and it hasn't been shopped out or anything. Um, they always kept stuff maintained in that you, know, you have all the parts for it. Um, it's like the, the Superdover that I have actually has all of the sensors as well, which really shocked me because I got it from Captain's Auctions. But um, this one is pretty, is also pretty complete. This, I, I haven't seen a DDR come in that didn't um, have everything in there. All right, I'm gonna take a quick break. We're gonna do a couple things and we'll wrap up on this cab. Okay, so uh, we're doing a little bit of work on this thing. So I, I had mentioned before that we, we don't have any green or any uh, any blue on this. So we were gonna replace a cable, but we took the glass off and uh, I just wanted to show this, just how much dust is on this monitor. Um, so again, obviously this isn't exactly um, like the representation I was looking for for um, for like a more shopped out cab out of Japan, but um, I mean this is still pretty normal. But like there's the glass here, and uh, you know it's pretty dusty too. Anyway, you know that's pretty normal. I think anywhere you go, it's going to be like this. But um, it's just a matter of um, how they actually keep the cab. Otherwise, so the other thing, uh, since we actually have the back open and we're talking about monitor stuff right now, um, they did replace the. I, I didn't really get a light in there earlier, but they did replace this monitor with a flat, um, which I think once we got it cleaned up and, and together, it's gonna be, it'll be nice, but is that. We've got this running, the fan's pretty loud on this, um, and we took the, the case off and stuff to get in there and adjust the cable, but it doesn't seem to be that great. So we're gonna do a little bit, a couple things with that um, before we actually wrap up and send this cab out the way it is. Um, yeah, we'll be back. Okay, so um, it's been now a couple weeks since this came in and um, we're finally wrapping this up here. We've got, um, we, we pulled out, I actually had to bring over a couple other pythons. We've got this one hooked up. This was the original. I think there's a third one over here somewhere. And um, so originally we had, I had thought that here, actually, I'm going to use this board up here. I had originally thought that the um, video connector here coming out of the PlayStation was the problem. Because I've seen that before where, like, this is loose and, you know, one color is missing. Um, unfortunately, it was not that. And um, I think it was the PS2 itself. So that's why I got the extra units over and um, they're just installing Supernova on that. And, uh, and get everything going. So it was also, we also did a, um, an IO swap and uh, that didn't do anything. We did a cable swap and it didn't do anything. So now we've got, um, and I'm using Supernova now to get it up. And as you can see, we're not having, well, I mean, there's no blue on the screen, but like you can kind of tell it's not as bad as you got the, the uh, white there. So anyway, we're gonna put this into test mode um, and also, like we'd mentioned, I think we've cleaned up the screen since then as well. And um, let's go to color check in the on now. You can see all the colors are there uh, like they're supposed to be. So anyway, that's that's that with the, with that. And it's it's now that that part's fixed. It was getting a foot panel error because we don't have it hooked up yet. Um, but yeah, anyway, that was that's really, I guess, all we can do to go over this cab. It's definitely not in as good shape as 
I was expecting or kind of lauding this video to be, but it's still a good represent. And then this is an older cab. This was running older hardware. It wasn't being kept modern. So I guess it kind of makes sense. We're going to be um, getting some CRT cabs that are actually, that have actually been kept up. And uh, I'll probably do a follow-up video on that. And hopefully that might actually show a little bit more what I expect out of a cab that um, has been, you know, more well kept in Japan. Whereas this one, maybe, maybe it hasn't. I don't know this. I don't have the story of it. So, you know, I can't really say. But the ones that we're operating, you know, current hardware, I think are going to end up being in, in a lot better shape. So look forward to that. It's going to be, you know, maybe in a month or two to get around to it. But, um... We will when we will. There's a lot of containers coming next month, so we may not get to it. Anyway, that's it for this video. Uh, we'll come back to DDRs in a future video.